Today we will explore three different ways we can have visual thumbnails for preset recall. So imagine you are in a church or in school or anywhere where you use PTC cameras and uh, you have stored presets, but um, either you have to have a really good memory to remember what preset one, two, three, four, five, and so on is, or you need to write it down. And in all of these cases, it is actually a little bit of a hassle for you as a user especially when you have multiple cameras and you need to come up with schemes on how to set these presets up. What if you could have a little thumbnail that showed you the, the frame grab the moment the preset was stored? That would give you an idea of the framing intuitively from looking at the display or the thumbnail, wherever it comes from. So in this video, we'll explore how we can do that with Skyhawk PTC controllers, because we have, of course, built this in, in our high quality and premium PTC control solutions that we are making for any kind of camera almost. It, today we'll be using Canon cameras, it could be Panasonic cameras, Sony cameras, even cameras that doesn't give us the opportunity of capturing thumbnails can be used because we have a frame grab application for our Blue Pill server you can use to grab frames out of a multiple viewer for instance and have them stored with the camera. But today we'll be looking at how to achieve this with the Stream Deck which is becoming network enabled using a piece of software we have done that uh, makes um, is a raw panel driver for Stream Deck. So they are now network enabled. Uh, the way it works is that it goes into a USB hub or basically it goes into the backside of our uh, units. We have USB A on the backside of many of our units in this case, uh, the Frameshot Pro. So uh, such as the Stream Deck can be connected directly to Skyhoy hardware and involved. We also have an iPad. So for today's demonstration, we'll be using an iPad as well. And then finally, we have the Frameshot Pro, which has 12 color displays that are really cool with a nice viewing angle, four-way buttons, and um, great. Uh, the, the premium solution really for um, visual thumbnails. And in addition, it has a row of buttons up here that can be used for what we call quick classes. So it also gives you an opportunity of extra functionality. So that's what we'll be exploring today in this video. The setup is really easy. We have the PTC Pro here and usually you would just select PTC Pro generic PTC control that would make the PTC Pro a solo controller that would connect to cameras. I already added three ca two cameras over here and an ATEM switcher by the way. But Instead of picking the default, we will now pick the one called Stream Deck Generic PTC Control or Frameshot Generic PTC Control for today's demonstration. I'll just do Frameshot PTC um, uh, Control here and you see what happens is that it just asks us, hey, we need another panel added. And in this dialog, you'll now select new panel, you'll look at the network, can I find a frame shot panel I can use here? You even see the models that are allowed. There is an SK underscore frame shot, which is um, this is actually the Frameshot Pro. And um, so it will find this one. This is the unit that I'm currently looking at. It's also revealed by the little display here that tells me the IP address and the port of this raw panel enabled device. So I can pick that one and then I can have immediate connection to it. And now I'll have visual presets on it. By the way, something you can see in our simulation tool where we have um, full one-to-one -one demonstration of what is shown in these controllers. Okay, let's go back here, add the cameras over here. So I'll just select, add another camera, go back to the simulator. And uh, here we see the uh, PTC Pro. Um, the moment I, uh, in the simulator, I select the first camera, you see that it is populating the corresponding Frameshot Pro with the uh, thumbnails for preset recall. So there you see, we, we even have multiple pages I can go to. So I have preset number 20 is stored, preset number, let me see, uh, the preset one, two, and three are stored with some thumbnails. I wonder if this is true. Well, it depends on whether I change the cameras in the meantime, but over here I have a view onto the two cameras I've connected today. Let me just take this down so I can navigate my, um, a simulator. The simulator is uh, really nice because it makes it easy for you to follow along. So if I go to CIN 700, we have down here, you'll actually find that the presets shown are different. So uh, once again, I would be able to browse to a second page. I don't think I have anything stored there, but I do have five presets on this one. So let's try to recall them. Uh, that was already recalled. I'll recall this one. You see, that is the framing that I'm actually getting. This one, what about that? This is the framing I'm getting. And this is the framing I would get. So 
you see, no need to scribble strip things, no need to have great memory, no need at all. You can have as many cameras as you want, and these will follow along as you go between. You basically use this camera selector on the PDC Pro panel, and it all changes over here as we are doing so. You can see it. If I change, then of course it's also changing on the real Frameshot Pro. Now, Frameshot Pro is your premium solution for this, and if you want to um, uh, use it to its full extent, then you would also, on the home screen, you would probably pick the one called with quick class, because if you pick that one with quick class, it allows you to, uh, let me see, sometimes this is a little bit messy, so let's just do this over again like that. Let's pick the panel, or maybe now it, this got separated. Let's remove that and pick the panel again from the menu here, so we're discovering it, and there we go. Okay, so that's nice, adding the two cameras over here. We basically just wiped out the configuration and now we need to go back into the original here. Um, okay, simulator, thank you, and select the camera, we are back in here. But these, this quick class row is what you get in addition on the Frameshot Pro and you can basically add functionality down here. I think maybe if we just pick Tyler's ATEM from Los Angeles, we'll now see that in the top row of buttons, we have functionality. And inside of this configuration, you see that the default it chose was ATEM audio control, but we could also go to macro or we could select uh, macro basic and we have different things happening in these keys up here. So that is like in addition, what you get on the Frameshot Pro. Now, the, um, what I wanted to do is like to wipe this out and then go back to a situation where we ask ourselves, what if we want to use the iPad instead? So now we'll put this one aside and then we'll use the iPad UI to do the visual preset recall. So we'll just build it up again as a frame shot because this um, will also be found by the same means. Now notice the iPad is actually popping up here. It's called XP underscore touch frame shot. Okay, so as I'm selecting that, you'll see that it's now clearing out and it's actually showing the same thing, but in a touchscreen UI, okay? Again, if we go to the simulator, you'll kind of see a representation of this. It's not like one-to-one -one exactly the same, so more like an abstract representation of it, but it is there and useful. So um, let's add the camera so we can see this is actually working. Um, there we go with that. Let's go back to the simulation tool and now you can see exactly what I promised you that the iPad will have these preset recall buttons. Let's test if it works. So I should be able to press this one and have that preset recalled. I press this one and I have that preset recalled. So I get that framing and I press this one and I get that one. Now imagine your volunteers using this iPad to hey, just press that one and you get that framing of the pastor or the choir or whatever it is, the, the teacher in the school, the uh, CEO in your company in the boardroom and so on. Very, very easy to use presets having either the Frameshot Pro or the Frameshot for iPad, essentially, what we have done here. So same thing. And naturally, as you would expect, if I change over to the camera, you also see this This one is updating with the thumbnails of the other camera, which I'm now recalling presets for. How does that work anyway? Well, the iPad is actually using a web browser that is pointed to the IP address of my Blue Pill device. So uh, if I go to packages, I'll show you what is necessary to make this uh, UI happen. It is called XPanel Touch. And inside XPanel Touch, you have a configuration here where it is simulating a frame shot layout. And it is doing so in a um, format uh, three by uh, four by three, which fits the iPad. You can also have it for iPhone. Then you would probably pick a format like uh, 16 by nine or 19.5 uh, to, to nine. It is possible if I actually do this and if I Resave and restart, you'll see that this has now changed its aspect ratio in a, just in a sec. We'll see, yeah, so now the aspect ratio changed, uh, changed over so that it actually fits on a phone. So that's also possible. There are many form factors available for the XPanel Touch, but that's kind of out of the scope of this one because what we want to do now is to move on to look at how we can use the Stream Deck for the same thing. That's like the third option in this video about visual preset recalls that we want to go and do. So basically, we should now find this one, the uh, um, Stream Deck version of this one. Uh, once again, I think it's safer for me to just clean up a little bit here. So I'll remove my panels and then PC Pro and the Stream Deck. There we go. 
And then I add this one as a panel. So now it's searching on the network for a Stream Deck device. And there we go. There we have it. And it's now connected. It, it blanked out and it has the paging selector up here in the corner. So let's quickly add some, some cameras to it. Uh, I can hold down shift. So if I hold down shift, click and sh shift, um, release shift on the last one, then I can quickly select two cameras. And um, all we need to do now is to go into our simulation and select the first camera. So what you see now is on the Stream Deck, we actually see these um, thumbnails that we saw before because these thumbnails are taken out of the device call for the camera. So yeah, essentially what we see on the Stream Deck is exactly the same thumbnails as down here. And I can now press these buttons to, and let's just follow along here on the side. So that was the first preset. I can recall the second preset here and I could have this preset. And of course, if I select the different camera over here, this is going to change around. You also see this is changing down here. So I can recall preset number one, preset number two, preset number three. And now maybe you're thinking, how do I actually change these preset, update the thumbnails? Very, very easy. So let's just manipulate the camera a little bit here. So let's say this is the new preset that I want to have on three. I just press and hold and immediately it is stored. You see the thumbnail is updated. So how could that be any easier, guys? This is, this is you know, really, really, really nice and easy way to update. So absolutely no need for script strips anymore. Same, by the way, is true for the frame shot and the iPad application. Press and hold for one second. You will store the preset. It will update the thumbnail for you and your users are good to go again um, with the, the new modified preset. So that's visual presets available on three different devices. So you have a ton of options with Skyhoy and it's coming with the PC Pro, with the PC Extreme, our uh, most popular PC controllers essentially. So, um, and across many, many different camera brands, not only Canon, but also Panasonic. Uh, some Sony cameras have them straight out of the camera. Other cameras need a frame grabber in between, but we have solutions for all of them. So thanks for watching this video and uh, please subscribe to our channel and follow along if you um, are interested in our technology. I really appreciate that you do and you can write comments to innovationlab at skyhoy.com that will reach me straight ahead and I would be super happy to know what you think and which ideas you might want to share with me.